Hey folks, and welcome to today's webinar based around the second row position. Um, the key themes of today's session, as with all of them, is, is noticing and wondering. So, you know, what are you noticing about your position? And then what are the questions that that leads you with? Today, you will 100% leave with more questions than answers, but hopefully we will be able to, to come up with a few answers during the day as well. I'm going to get straight into it and let's start off with um, today's first guest. Uh, we're, we're, we're delighted to have, um, you know, Railway Union Leinster and Ireland International, Aoife McDermott here to share some insights. Hey, Aoife. Hey, uh, how are you? Can you hear me there? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. All good. Um, look, we, we, as I said, we'll get straight into it. Um, you know, if, I suppose if we're talking about watching games to improve your own game, like what do you look for when you're watching games that will help you improve? Um, so often I would uh, look at the second rows, notice, you know, their work rate around the park, their tackle sec, are they making an impact and carrying the ball? Um, you know, their ball playing abilities, are they offloading? Are they using their tip on passes? Um, and they're linking work with the backs and things like that. But um, mostly, mostly you're looking for that control over the line out. Um, and when I'm watching rugby, um, you know, I'd look at a, a defensive picture and, and notice what, what is that defence doing? Are they using a mirror defence? Are they padding up? Are they giving you the front? Or are they marking a particular player in um, and then looking looking at that defence, like thinking about the playbook that we would have with Ireland and stuff. What what lineup would I call to to you know beat that defence? And what what would I use in, in our from our playbook to, to try and win the ball, given the picture that that particular defence is giving um, on a given day? Um, and then if you kind of flip that, you're kind of looking at the the attack and what um, while watching rugby, you know what what are the attack doing? What's their style of attack? Are they using throw jumps to win the ball and, and looking to just win on speed and things like that or, or are they using you know dummies and decoys to try and uh, move the opposition to create space and win the ball in a more um, preferable area stuff like stuff like that um also then like you know you're kind of looking at you know pitch map and again seeing what seeing what teams are doing around the park on you know on their five meter exits um in open play on like the halfway line or again at the opposition five meters you know what what line outs are they going to 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 try and Get a get a good ex exit or get a get a get the ball over the line um, and score the tries. Um, so you're looking at you know then you're kind of going back to look at your own pitch map that we have with Ireland and stuff like that. And does it mirror up or is there something you can take to to bring into Ireland maybe and use going forward? And then you know you're also looking like how previous lineups have gone. Have they tried to hit the tail twice and been unsuccessful? And what's you know what's their next lineup move or are they you know having good consistency with? A particular line out and are they continuing to use that and challenge the defence to try and try and get them to stop so loads of different things while, while watching. Brilliant brilliant no look and, and a great insight there and I think you you know you've, you've nailed that it. it's it's it really is about watching what what other people are doing exploiting the advantages then that, that you can actually use there and um, is there any specific examples I suppose in your own game that that maybe you, you've noticed something and then you, you've managed to change on, on the back of that? Um, I suppose a lot of what you would notice would be coming from your, your analysis of teams um, ahead of matches and stuff. Um, you know, if you were playing England or someone at the weekend, you're looking at um, have they any particular triggers or have they main jumpers or key players that are operating in that line out? You know, just how does their hook or throw? Do they move the ball back and then throw it? Um, and, you know, you're trying to identify all these different things to hope. Then when you're going out onto the pitch, you can disrupt your steals and line outs and you know, ideally, if you can bring that into training ahead of the match and, and have an opposition rep it against you so you can work on your defence and, you know, and try and become better at um, disrupting that, that particular line out or, again, noticing what they do on defence and stuff like that to, to come up with what, what will work in, from your playbook to, to win ball against them. Brilliant. Yeah, look, and, and you know, you've nailed it there and in, in how, how can you go and understand a bit more about what you want to do, what, what they do, and then how do you implement it in training? Uh, thanks about Anifa. And look, we we will come back to you later on, maybe for a, for a question as well. So stay posted. Um, that leads us in nicely. Um, I suppose look, we're, we're very lucky to have one of the the, the best referees in, in the country here now on with us today. Even though he's Navin, uh, I still like him. Uh, Sean Gallagher. Sean, how are you? I'm very good, Callum. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, look again, straight into it. I suppose, what are some of the key areas that you look relative to the second row position? Yeah, so I suppose when we're reviewing a match or we're preparing for a match at the weekend, there's a couple of different areas that we look at as referees. But similar to what Aoife said there, mainly we concentrate around the line out mall, and that's the most important area in relation to second rows for us. 
So I suppose some of the big picture things that we'd look at is, you know, do they contest for the ball in the air? And how do they go about doing that? Do they stay on the ground? And if they do, how do they contest from the ground? Um, when a mall forms, how do they go about defending that? And I suppose, uh, does that change in different times of the game or uh, in different parts of the pitch so that we're prepared uh, for the different scenarios that will be, be given? And I suppose it's really important for us to watch and learn from rugby because um, we deal with different countries and leagues and tournaments each week. So it differs from league to league and we need to be up to date on everything. Brilliant, yeah. And look, I think a, a theme is already emerging there even just of, of the different pictures that we paint in the different areas of the pitch as well. And, and that's something that we you know, maybe don't notice as much that the teams have certain certain ways to do things in, in their own areas. Um, if, if we're speaking about the pictures that you can paint, is there any sort of examples maybe that, that you have that, that you could bring us through? Yeah, I've just taken one example from a line out from a recent game. So I'll, I'll share one clip with you briefly. So um, uh, this was I was preparing to referee Leinster. So you'll see that in this line out, there's three second rows. We've got um, Devon Toner, Scott Fardy. And then the one that I want to focus on here, because he was the player that I was preparing for on the day, was Ryan Bard, who has the white headband. He's number 23. So I'll just show you the clip and then I'll tell you what I would take from it going into a match as a referee. So really simply from looking at that one clip, I already know if I'm preparing to referee Ryan Bard, I know that he's going to compete in the air hard for the ball. And in this clip, it's a really good one. He does everything legal. He doesn't get the contest. He doesn't win possession. He lands back on the ground. But I know that he'll fight through to try and break the seam at the front and get to the ball carrier. So when I watch this line out, and obviously I don't watch this one, I'll watch some others uh, from previous matches too. But it'll allow me to be prepared and my assistant referee to be prepared to know that if we've got a line out in this area of the pitch, there's a good chance that Ryan is going to compete. And if he doesn't win the ball, there's a good chance that he'll try and fight through them all. And it allows us to be prepared to accurately make a decision and reward him if he does it right. But on the flip side, to penalise him if he gets something wrong, he takes the guy out in the air, he swims up the side. So watching and learning from these clips is, is really key for us. Um, Brilliant. And then, you know, look, that, that, that just illustrates the point of the, the noticing and wandering and, and, and all of us, but, you know, both referees and, 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 you know, coaches, players, we all need to go and, and, and look at our own development and, and how we actually can, can improve that, especially during this time when one of the key things we can do is work on our own skills and also on, on watching games and learning a bit more. Sean, thanks a million for that. We're going to move straight into our, our, our main presentation of the day. We're, we're very lucky. We've got three excellent presenters here. We've got Declan O'Brien, who's coach development manager with Leinster. We have Owen Maloney, who's the coach player development officer in Munster, and Ben Armstrong, who's the coach player development officer in Leinster. So I'll hand it over to you, Declan, to take it away. We're, we're just going to have a look at him. Um the lock and I know Aoife and Sean are touching the line out there and, that, and, and that's important for them. Um, as we go through this presentation, if you can just look at the value of the modern day lock to the game and um, maybe observe and notice as Colin is saying, what are we looking for and what are we looking at? And also have a closer look at the attributes of the lock in a line out later on with Owen as well. And always keep practicing, particularly in lockdown, on your individual technical and tactical skills as well. So. If you never thought as a second row you weren't valuable, this is just a re recent research over the top 14 of Premiership Rugby and the, the Guinness Pro 14. The second rows are in the top three, not only in the top three, they're in the, the top player in terms of salaries and their position and their value to the teams throughout Europe. So we're not just all about scrumming and line out, we have a lot more to our game. So uh, the next video should show us the, the impact that we can have in a game and the modern day rugby player, particularly a lock or second row can have.
love, I confess, it's for the love of Slow ball from Curry, got all through the hole, goes Ty Ford on a stack from Ty Ford. Oh, that's magnificent from the big man. Okay. So the modern day lock is going to have to do a lot more than the set piece work, which is a, a, obviously a priority. But if you look at, you know, up in the top right hand corner here, this is the message I want to get across today. Uh, when coaches, and particularly sometimes at a higher level, but all levels, you know, at age grade and adults, this is what coaches are looking for in a player. Um, in terms of your ball carriers, there could be 10 on average per game, could be plus or minus six. And at the adult game, it could be 12 or more. The environment, the weather sometimes may affect that, or obviously the opposition or the game plan that your coach might want to implement as well have uh, a crucial importance on that as well. Rook involvements, um, and rook involvements here from the adult game is 26 and is 20 on average at the age grade. Tackles 14 at age grade and 16 plus, that could be higher again. Uh, I noticed no, no McNamara, the academy coach the other day, said to me triple doubles. So he's talking about ball carries, rook involvements and tackles all being in double figures for the professional game. But that necessarily mightn't be true for um, age grade or the women's game. Total distance covered in a game, ending up to 7,000 metres, between 5,000 and 4,000, between 4 and 7K. So there's a lot of running going on, there's a lot of carries, a lot of rook involvements, and a lot of tackles within the game itself. Another clip here from a professional end, and then we show one from the age grade, and just to try and make some comparisons of our, of our general play. You'll see the second rows, uh, James Ryan and Ty Byrne being highlighted in these clips. Don't mind this one so much, it's the next part in phase play. So Ethan you spoke about getting good quality lineup, quick ball, speed, good lift, good delivery. Little breakout here by Will Connors and hitting the midfield. Now our second rows and locks and as players, just watch for the next phase and see where the locks are at and what skill sets they, they need for the modern game as well. We have Tyke there, little tip on, wrap around, and James on a strong carry, landing long, good clear out, and then a kick to the corner. Scrum is really important as well, real big emphasis on the tight head lock as well to lock down that scrum. And I know there's a unit um, presentation next week as well. So a good solid platform to work off, 8-9, strong carry by Bundy. And again, watch for the second rows coming around now. In position early, working hard, strong carry. Probably could have worked a little bit better on the placement and the clear out. And a hit up again, two second rows circled already. I think Ty gets a latch on to James here now and drives him to the contact. So a big emphasis on the carries and the clean outs and the tackles. And just one clip here on a kick receipt as well. So very huge parts to, to our game. And just to give you a snapshot of the age grade, because the majority of people online today, well, I'd say will be age grade. I'll just show you this one here. Just in the past couple of years, it's the Leinster Schools against Northampton, I think it is. So from a player and a coaching point of view, you can look at this. Good gain line, good go forward ball, back to blind side, number four, little tip on pass. Get a clean out, could be better, could be lower on the clean, could be faster. Second row, they're a little bit isolated. And I suppose from Sean's point of view, that could have been a turnover, I'd say, with a poach, because the clean was a little bit late. Good lift, clean delivery. Hitting up the midfield again, watch for the repositioning again. What are you noticing about the second rows? It'll knock on on that one. But watch and notice the second rows that get in position. What did it do next? From the first clip to this uh, second clip here with age grade. So number four, putting up his hand. Obviously pre-rehearsed, out the back door. And again, just an example of repositioning and working off the ball in, in, the, in the modern game. 
All right. So, Owen, you're going to jump in there now, I think. Yeah, and just as Owen's getting set up, like it, it I suppose it paints a, it paints a really interesting picture of how valuable you know good second rows are, and, and you know it's a really multi-skilled position in in the in you know the terms of our game. There, you can see all of the different things that that they need to do with that as well. Um, I suppose a key point that I, I would have taken out of that deck is to focus in on the position. So don't get caught up in in drifting, letting your mind wander and watching the overall or or watch the overall game and maybe then watch it back, you know, for, for specific things within that. Because there is a lot going on in rugby um, and there's a lot going on in these webinars. So we are actually recording these as well and it will be sent out to everyone who has logged in over the coming days. Um, so if you're <coughs> if you're recently taking notes, you uh, can can relax a wee bit there and, and enjoy the presentation. Owen. OK. Thanks, Colin. Um, I just want to look at, in specifics, the line out and the, the locked role, because it is a specialist position. We look back at probably two greatest second rows in the recent times, we Paul O'Connell and Victor Matfield, and they very much specialised in the line out. So uh, a bit of a clip here from Victor Matfield. I think we'll, if you listen to this, we can start from there. I want us to talk about what you're doing, what jump. You're actually going if you, for if you go through here, yeah, you can see they do kind of a man watch, a mirroring. So the thing is, their action beats reaction. If you look at him, he had a look at me. So I saw the throw first, so as the throw went, I went, and he had to react to what I did. So if the throw, throw is 100% same there, you'll always be close, but you'll always be 10 centimeters just behind me. Once again, here's you. Whole idea in the middle. So straight up, so by what Victor means by action means, re uh, always beats reaction. If he gets up in the air quicker, the reactor, the defending line out man, which is going to be me in this situation, is always going to be behind you. That's what you want to do. Get yourself in the air as quickly as you can. Have you got a jumping style technique that gets you up in the air quick? No, I just think it's all about the space again. As you have to be able to, in one step, get a meter forward. You have to get in one step a meter back. A lot of the people, if they want to jump, let's say, meet it in front of them, they take about two, three steps, and that takes time. So everything is about time. Time you move, time up to the highest point where you can get. So time is, if you can cut out on time, then you don't give as much time to the for the opposition to contest. Okay, we've got another fantastic clip. I think this is you versus the Sharks. I oh, know this is defensive line out, of course, which is another real strength of your game. Yeah, yeah, we went a different style. We went almost a pot. And I, I started in front, almost showed them the gap behind me. And as they got ready, I just moved into the gap. Yeah, again, we're not man watching. I've got a pot with me. So I showed them the front. As they got ready, I moved to it. And I, I remember that Kieran said, no, 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 no. And then I just came back. So it's almost just moving around them, not knowing where I'm going to go up. And one final one, this one after you beat beaten Kieran Reid versus the Sharks. A year against against Kieran just moving around. Yeah, against the shots, they get a, a pot system, so they don't they don't man watch you. So if they got only two pots, we've got five jumpers, so somewhere it, sh it must be open. But again, it's about time. They like to move around, so you don't want to have a long pull that goes three, four, and they can shift around and then oh damn, I called something that's open. Now they move, now you're in trouble. So the quicker you can get to a point, the better it will go against that. OK, so just to um, a good overview, and there's a longer video if you look on YouTube, Victor Matfield lineup masterclass, you can learn a lot from it. But just to look at that in a bit more detail, the idea of action beats reaction, you always have the advantage as the attacking line out, unless your movement is slower than the opposition. So if you have quick reactions, you can make that up in defensive line as well, which is very important. Effective calling, identifying, reading the opposition and making the right call. And in order to do those two things, you need consistency in your setup, you don't give away too much in your setup and your setup correctly to do your job. Consistency of execution, consistent footwork into your jumping, into your lifting, and then consistent delivery to your scrum half or to set up the mall. All very important. How do you make or how do you get that consistency is true excellence in every rep. So sharp, accurate, deliberate practice. There is no point in going out and just practicing bad habits. You know, habit of videoing yourself, analyzing what you're doing. At the moment, you won't have a coach to do it for you, so you've got to do it yourself. Or maybe you can share the video with your coach. So to break that down a bit further, looking at stances very quickly. What do you notice? What can they do from those positions? 
Are they set for lifting, jumping, or both? In which directions can they do it? Okay, there's differences there, and you can read, learn to read it, and also learn to not give away your intentions from your own setup. So be consistent. Um, in terms of the jumping, there's a quick video with Paul O'Connell with Fineen Richerly explaining different basic jumps you can practice. This is something you can practice in your own. First time. jump, just a very basic jump, splitting the line. So we'll be using the line as a coaching tool quite a lot, lads. They basically stand like that, almost splitting a line. Then they bring their two feet together on the line. Feet together makes it easy for the lift. One for the next one, a little bit of movement. Starting really slow, and then for the lob. We should tell to start slow, build up the pace. A lot of guys jump from side on. So you split the line, as Fanine is there, and jumping straight up off the line. Okay, that's all about getting that consistency in the jump because the lifters rely on that. The timing always often relies on that. If that jumping is different, different footwork every time, a lot will go wrong. And the easiest one to start with and the basic one to get right is the middle foot jump, which even in this video, James Ryan working with John Fogarty's coach, you can listen in and hear what they're talking about. They're still working on those basics. Okay, James, last one of these. Uh, this is where you snap your feet into, into the middle. So not off front foot, not off back foot. Just brought your feet to the middle. So we're watching real time, real time first. So what we're trying to do is produce the best body shape and so that you can power up and explode up through the air. And this is nice balance to it. So as you as you can see now, you're you're in a nice balanced position. And you should be ready now to, to explode through the air, keeping your chest a Bit more prone again. You have a tendency to bring it, see you're bringing it back there, but it's good in general. We can add real speed now. The lifters can add real speed once you get that first part right, and you're going in a good shape through the air. They can add speed through the air. These lifters, and we can do it better, but it's not bad at all. And at the end, the end result is is this this nice nice clean line. You're likely to come. You're likely to go straight up and straight down. And whether we're going off the top or whether we're trying to build uh, a mall, um, this is the shape you want. Nice balanced start, a good clean line through the air, and a nice line back down to 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 a point on the ground. Okay, so that's something you can work on on your, on your own or with your coaches. Um, also, I noticed in the previous webinars a lot of players asking what they can do in um, lockdown on their own, and here's examples of of that. Those aerial skills. And the consistency of delivery. So those area skills are involved in the line out and in the kickoffs. Can't do enough of practice of that. This one I with a bit of a health warning. Don't do it on top of a ladder, make sure it's somewhere safe. Okay, simple little exercises you can work on. Uh, in terms of that's the, ta the technical little things you can work on, your your jump and your catching. But in terms of the tactical, like Ethan was saying about studying line outs, maybe you don't need to get into specifics of opposition, but you can definitely learn about general line out formations. So in this case, watch a match with Six Nations coming up. This one's from an Ireland-Wales women's match last year. Put yourself in the position of the Welsh second row the blue cap. What did she see? Lifter, jumper, lifter, jumper, lifter, lifter, lifter. You can tell from the strapping of their legs which is which. So get those pictures, get used to that. This is what a lot of coaches would do. Sketch it in your notebook. In this case, the green being the Irish defensive setup. Put yourself in the position of this player. Maybe you can use your own setup in this case. And Come up with what you need to do. Uh, we're all a bit challenged in lockdown, so this is a little example. Kind of came up with something different you could do. My own back garden, uh, a stick for the five meter line, a stick for the 15, blue cones for lifters, yellow for jumpers. If I'm in that situation, so now I'm practicing my tactical decision making. I can make the call and I'm practicing my technical. Okay, I haven't played rugby in 15 years and 47 years old, so maybe the technical isn't perfect. It won't be perfect for you either. Don't be afraid to video yourself and pick up those errors. I can see lots of errors there. That's perfect. Here you can see the blue cone, the lifters moved. So the lifters moved. What do I change? I move into the space. Action beats reaction. And I'm practicing and building up those pictures. If that's what I see, that's what I'll do. Okay, easy to add the aerial skills. In this case, I got my wife to do it. Hence my jacket because it took so many repetitions to get that right. But we're all challenged in the lockdown. You can also practice your lifting. I already covered lifting today. but Maybe in that situation, you're going to be the lifter instead of the 
jumper, but still calling it and still practicing your lift. OK, so there's a very simple exercise you can do yourself. Again, another fr freeze frame. I think it's Aoife in this picture. What's the picture or in this example? What picture does she see from the Welsh defence? Sketch down, go out and practice it. Go through your technical. You can do attack and defence shapes and practice your technical skills at the same time. So there's an exercise you can do in lockdown to keep yourself and improve yourself even in your tactical decision making. Okay, Declan, do you want to come in? Yeah, so just one, just one more quick video to show on the, on the kickoff. So. That, um, Jeff Price was off for a, a HIA and then he tossed it, so he's back in. And Crowley puts one hanging into the wind. Look at that, gives the chasers every chance to get there. A long, long stretching from Tom Ahern to gather that. You just see McCarthy there dragging it down. He knew exactly what he was doing. Well, maybe the Ryan Act was read by Gareth Williams and the lads are half time because it's a much greater the Again, the environment sometimes you can see the wind blowing on the out halves here there at the moment, so the, the ball is going to hang in the air. Uh, give an opportunity for a chase and a catch or a deflection at times. Didn't come off there, but it's good energy to get up there and get after the ball. Just one um, restart receipt again and a little bit of face play to, to finish off with. So great catch, leg drive, clean out, front drawers I think in position for a little tip on. Great burst up the field, open space. And then clean out again once more and the second row coming down, down the blind side for a carry again. So that work right off the ball to get into position to carry to leg drive. And ideally, hopefully, to offload as well. So, hopefully, there we have loads of stuff, loads of visuals to to help you when you're watching games as a player. You know what we as coaches as well are looking for. Jump back in there, on good man. Yeah. So uh, again, something you can practice. Those general skills are really important. Obviously, line up maybe a specific role, but you have to be able to do everything in the modern second row. And again, these are things you can practice in lockdown. Quick video here, something we did in the last um, lockdown muscle rugby, just putting together our Mike Petman, our technical skills coach, with lots of different exercises you can do on your own to improve your what we call the cornerstone skills, what Lens are called the four core skills, to catch and pass. Footwork, innovation, your ball carrying, something you can work on a lot on your own. Ball control. There's a lot more of these videos available on the Munster um, website and on the Munster YouTube channel. And I know the other provinces and their websites have resources as well. But there's an awful lot. That's just, just an intro. There's an awful lot more you can do there to work on your individual skills. And the players who take this time to get better at these things will really excel when we get back to playing rugby. Just on mute there, Ducky. On mute again. One last course, just to wrap it up. So for me, line out ability is paramount if you want to become a great lock. Hand in, hand with the line, or, or work with and playing like an introduced forward on the field. So that's it. That's us, Carl. If I learn how to work my mute now, I'll be fine. But other than that, we're fine. Yeah, well, look, I'd normally let you away with it and just, just keep you on mute. But since it was a quote, I said you'd better be able to speak it. Um, no, look, and, and some some hugely in, interesting points there and, and great coaching tips as well and things that we can do during the, the coming uh, few weeks as we, as we go and build back into contact and build back in, in our gradual return to rugby. Um, you know, it, it's a tough time for a lot of people, but it's also an exciting time because we can work on our own development and then we can be ready when rugby does return before the end of the season. Um, if we're just going to bring in the coach's view now, we're going to bring in Ben Armstrong to just uh, take us through a couple of things. You know, so I suppose, Ben, you know, what do you want your players to notice um, from their position when they're actually watching rugby? Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, I think as a coach, um, one of the things I suppose we, we, we almost want our locks to be a um, you know a back row player who can also scrummage. And um, 
you can see there by the screen, uh, this is not a be all and end all, but it's certainly just a guide for what we're looking for as a coach for a, a lock, um, the modern day lock, I'd say. Uh, the biggest thing for us, or, or for myself as a coach, is locks need to have a comfort with the ball above and around their head. So, you know, you're talking about the line-out take needs to be above and behind your head at times. Um, the restarts, the kickoff, they're almost like the third set piece at the moment. Uh, and then, again, totally is just being a two-sided player. So being able to jump off your left foot and right foot, being able to step off your left foot and right foot, pass off both, and then use the inside left hand sometimes on the inside of a line-out there. Um, one of the other challenges we look for, because the lock is usually the, typically the tallest player or one of the tallest players on the pitch, is our body height. So locks really have to concentrate on their body height around the poach and around the ball carry and around the tackle. Um, so always looking at that body shape that uh, the, the lock you're watching is giving you. You look at James Ryan's ball carrying tag there in those ones there, it's, it's, it's excellent there as well to see. Um, oh, and if we just go on, I think, uh, again, something to work on, guys, is that comfort uh, for your individual practice at the moment of that ball of being above your head. Uh, just press play, mate. I'm not sure if I'm talking. Uh, it's no problem. I can just talk around it, guys. I just again working in the in the in the yard, and I'm not looking to accuracy for someone to kick it to. You're just going to throw it to yourself. So as we go there, it's all right. Just keep playing. Or is it frozen? Uh, while we're waiting to fix that up, guys, um, oftentimes locks work in teams. So if you're looking at the scrum, make sure that you're you're looking at what tight head lock is going. Is he going around the corner and the loose head lock staying, depending on where the ruck is? And you'll see here I've just got the ball being caught above my head, and I'm aiming for that player to be catching that with their feet standing still, which means they're nice and balanced. And if we we're looking at a kick restart there, if you can set with your feet balanced, you can go up and lock there and excuse the belly top. But uh, again, just making sure you're really comfortable catching that ball above your head. You're a two-sided player with your jumping off your, off your left and your right foot. Um, and then are you working in a team with your loose head or your tight head lock, moving around the scrum and away from the line out? Where is that lock going? So uh, that's, that's what I'm looking for and what I'm looking for my players to look at. Brilliant, Ben. Thanks a minute for the insight and uh, the sartorial elegance there within that video. Um, folks, look, you'll see we're, we're just a couple of minutes over, so anyone that needs to log off, please feel free to do so. We're going to go through a few questions, which will actually then um, be on the recording if you do need to log off. But um, I suppose, uh, again, getting straight into them, uh, we've, had, we've had a couple of questions in there. Um, if we go to Aoife first on this one, um, questions in around about, you know, what type of lineouts should you call depending on position in, in the field? And I, I know it's very subjective, but I suppose what what are the key things you're looking for in the different positions of the field? Very, very subjective question there. Um, I suppose, um, you know, if you're on your five metre line, you want ball security, like um, you don't want to be trying anything too risky and then probably pass the 10 metre or towards the, the tail of the line out on, on your own five metre line. You just want to, maybe go up at the front or up at four and, and just secure the ball and maul and get, get that exit going. As you move up the pitch, then you can be a bit more adventurous and, you know, build into it as the game goes on and, and see how the throws are going, how the opposition are reading your defences. And it's really about kind of adapting and adjusting to to the line as as the game develops and, and see what's working well for you and, what, and what's not. Yeah, brilliant. No, look, as I say, very subjective, but some good points there about, you know, where you want to secure the ball and, and safety of those lineouts. Um, if we come to the deck next, um, I suppose we've had a few questions in around size and weight for playing into positions and, and then even the differences between four and five within the scrum. Um, so, so, you know, have you any thoughts on, on, on what the key differences are there? Yes, look, if we, if we think of modern day players as well, and um, Previously, you know, players that have been there, it's not necessarily, I mean, some people are really, really tall, but not as broad. And other people, maybe they might be six foot, six foot four, depending on the age grade or, or the actual age of the, the player. So, look, the, the SNC part will be important as well as you go through programs, development programs, club and school programs, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not the overriding thing. Ty Byrne is not the biggest man in the world compared, compared to Devin Toner. He for herself is very, very tall, you know. So, Everyone is going to be a different body shape. You just got to work with it. And for really, really tall people, carrying the ball sometimes can be a struggle, and it takes a lot of practice to 
get your body down quickly to take those tackles and take those hits as well. That's important to consider, but that's where the evasion comes in as well and use your long levers to hand off people. Yeah, no, look, and I, I think you've nailed it there in that, you know, it's the modern day player and, and, and there's different sizes and different different shapes of, of people playing in these roles and it's important to focus on all the, the different attributes of a rugby player as opposed to just simply narrowing down. Um, thanks for that, Deck. Uh, we will put Sean in the hot seat next. Um, Sean, just a quick one on, on I suppose, mall defence and, you know, w- what are some of the key things that you would look for you know, to, to make sure that people are being legal whilst they're defending them all? Um, I suppose if we take different teams, every team defends differently and they might even defend differently from week to week depending on their game plan. So I suppose for us, mainly the focus at the moment is around when the attack and lifter is in the air, making sure that the uh, jumpers aren't taken early and um, making sure that the defender defending players aren't thrown across and they take the jumper out illegally in the air or land on the lifters or disrupt the mall setup. So that tends to be at the line out, the things that happen most now. And you may have noticed that over the last while we've penalized a lot in the Pro 14 players being thrown across and taken out in the air or landing the lifters. And it started to go out of the game now and players adapt to us. But there'll always be something new and then we have to have to stay on top of it and make sure that we we keep that fair contest for for the teams. Brilliant. No, look, absolutely ideal. And it's I suppose it's key for our players to make sure again that noticing and wondering, you know, we need to notice what the trends are, how referees are refereeing the game and, and get that understanding to, to change our behaviours. Um, and if we come to Ben next, I suppose leading on from, you know, defending the line out in the mall, questions come in there and, and it's just kind of again very subjective but you know in in your opinion you know do teams currently compete enough defensively in line outs and you know what would be your own personal preference or, or is there a difference yeah i think it's um again it, it, much like it depends where where you are on the pitch and then also the weather of the day but um defending a line out in the air or a ball in the air is, is a risk reward you know, you may cut it off at source by stealing the ball while, you know, winning the line out. Um, but you are going to be better by staying on the ground and stopping the mall and getting your mall set up quicker than the opposition. But again, if you're looking at um, what Victor Matfield's talking, if he's 10 centimetres faster going up in the air, he's also going to be 10 centimetres quicker coming down so that the opposition's mall may be set up quicker if you do want to defend in the air. But uh, personally... It's up to you as, as as a player, whether you've been confident, you've stolen a couple of lineouts beforehand, you might feel comfortable going after that in the air, or you may think to yourself, no, we've got to, we've got to stay down and, and, and stop this after it's, and try and get set up before them. Brilliant. A couple of key considerations there about, you know, why why you would challenge, why not to challenge, um, and how, how you might do that as well. Um, look, we'll, we'll finish off our, our questions with, with Owen. Um, you, you might have thought you were getting away with it there. But, um, you know, you, you've, you've brought us through some, some great at-home exercises and drills to go and do. Um, I suppose, what are the, the, the cues and processes, the, the, the key takeaways from cues and processes when, when approaching a line-out, in your opinion? Um, I suppose you're talking about the timing, is it, in terms of when to do things? Uh, that will yeah. well, Every line will have a cue to start it, whether that's a movement of the jumper, movement of somebody else, if there's more movement in the line out, or the troll of the hooker. And then getting your timing from that. And what you're really looking for is what Victor Matfield said there, where he's always 10 centimeters ahead, that the ball arrives at that time and the defender doesn't catch up. From a player and coach's point of view, if you're there waiting for it and the defense are catching you, you've got to go back and look at your timing. What was the cue and what was the timing of the other movements of that? So that's a key teller of what's going on in your line out, is if you're catching the ball when you're that 10 centimeters ahead, or are they catching up with you? You've got to work back from that. Perfect. And uh, I suppose it speaks to that cooperation between various positions on the pitch and the work between lifters, jumpers, throwers uh, as well. Folks, not much left to say apart from thank you to all our presenters today, to, to Declan, to Sean, to Owen, to Aoife, to Ben. Um, and you know, thanks to Janine in our support there and, and the rest of the team in the back of the office. We have a, a number of more webinars coming up. If you want to look at irishrugby.ie, you'll go and get information on those. And to thank you for actually tuning in and being part of today. Thanks a million, folks.